Tara Spencer Nairn, and you're listening to Droids Canada. This is David Faustino. Hello, this is Andrew Chalmers, the writer and doctor in Doctor Who Doctor. This is Dr. Steve-o. Ha, everybody, this is the Cavernator. This is Inspector Gadget. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? It's your boy, J-Rock. Good evening, folks. This is James Duval. This is Jeremy Tiger. This is Kim Possible. I'm Chris Holden. Hey, this is Pat Mastriani from Degrassi. <laughs> this is the evil Dr. Bad Vibes. Again, this is Missy Bear. And this is more from X-Men. Hey, this is Andrew Gazess. This is Sean Gunn. Hi, this is Robert Carradine. It's Tammy Stronach from The NeverEnding Story. Hey, it's Zach Callison. Hey, I'm T.J. Jenny Rock. And I'm Neil Young. I'm Commander Shepard. Ralph Garman here. You're listening to Droids Canada. You've made an excellent choice. You have chosen wisely. Warning. Listener discretion is advised. Hello. So I've always loved hook, line, and sinker um, with the sexy fish talk. Because I, I feel like, that was first season, but I feel like Karen never really got to have fun like that. Um, I was always the straight character, which is hard to do, but the straight character is always very necessary because it balances everybody out. So I was the ground, I, was the, I needed to be grounded so that Davis could be believable. Because if we were both super silly, then you'd be like, oh, I don't, I'm, I'm having a hard time buying that. Um, but I felt in Hook, Line, and Sinker, there were a few episodes where Karen really, there, you got to see another side of Karen, and that was, that was one of them, and I really enjoyed that one. Like the whole, like, Karen slept with Hank, and going fishing, and being like, oh, and the whole dreamy sequence, and um, Fred or Hank with the, <laughs> the bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> looking like he was all dreamy. I'm like, oh my gosh, the writers are so ridiculous. But I just had a lot of fun with that. I got to really play around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite was the um, the gumball machine. Oh, that was going to be my next one, where yeah. she was like, ah, stay safe. <laughs> that episode, oh my gosh. So I was chewing gum, hubba bubba gum, for most of my gum, my gum chewing, they did it all in one day. Just That was just the way they, they planned it. Like, okay, let's do all of Karen's gum scenes in this one. So all day, I was chewing mounds of hubba bubba because I had to do bubbles and I had to be chewing gum. And I don't know if you chewed hubba bubba for an entire day. And often I had like two pieces in there because I had to get good bubbles. Holy crap, the next morning I woke up I was in so much pain, I couldn't eat food. I, I couldn't chew my whole jaw. I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh, oh God, oh my God, like so much pain. I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap, that is intense. My jaw got a workout. It was all stiff from going to the gym. So for any of those uh, aspiring actors out there, if you're going to be doing any kind of a <laughs> chewing scene or a bubblegum commercial, you need to do a little bit of training to get the Yeah, the you got you to you do a little warm-up with your jaw there. Maybe don't go all in, you know, do some lead-up where you just chew gum for like an hour or one day, maybe two hours the next day. Yeah. Mm. Lifting weights there. <laughs> Lifting weights with the gum. Mm. Now, um, moving back to the uh, animated series, was there ever any doubt that the original cast would be the voices of the animated series? Oh, of God, course, no. of course, minus uh, minus Janet. Yeah, um, and that was really hard because we knew about the animated series, and Janet knew about the animated series, and she was so excited about the animated series. Um, yeah, that was really sad. Uh, um, yeah, so we we had been talking about the animated; it just wasn't announced, um, and Janet was really excited. She was sick. But we were not expecting her to, that was uh, um, a shock. Like, we didn't think that it was going to happen so quickly. And, um, <clears throat> but yes, everybody was absolutely on board and excited and uh, ready to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, with the recording of it, now I did see kind of conflicting things. Did you get to record it with some of the other people, same room kind of together for the chemistry? Or so did you? It was actually, I'm so happy they did it this way. Sorry, I've got a. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Um, 
normally animation, how they shoot it, is you're in a room by yourself and you just say your lines. You have no idea how the other person is going to say their lines. And that's how animation is recorded. It's very like solitaire, and you're not you, you're not working off anyone. So for Corner Gas, because a lot of us weren't and like we we were not familiar with animation, and also you know David Story, who's directing it, also not familiar with animation. They decided that they would shoot it or record it in an untraditional way. So everyone was in Vancouver or Toronto. So we would. Um, all shoot at the same time. Obviously, this is pre-COVID. So they would have the five people that were in Vancouver and the three, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, three of us that were in Toronto. We would record at the same time and they would patch us in. So there would generally be like a two second delay between Toronto and Vancouver. So sometimes it sounded like you were waiting, but you, like you were. Um, and we would read the script beginning to end. So you were actually hearing and working off of the other actors and what they were saying. Because I think, well I think, I know what makes Corner Gas so funny is, is how we work together as actors. And <clears throat> I think to have the comedy and to have the comedy work the way it does, that was the only way to do it. So when COVID hit, that's when it got weird and it became trickier. So um, in the Toronto recording studio, eventually they were able to make two separate booths that were um, closed in. And in the Vancouver recording studio, they could have Brent and Nancy in one together because they were one cohort. And then they had one other mic. So they would have to just shuffle it around to try and figure out who had their scenes together and record it that way. And then there were some times where they didn't have someone and I would just be like, okay, I'll read that. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be lacy for this scene for you. So that someone always had someone to read with. So that at least you were hearing the lines. Um, and I, I feel like that helped. And I, I appreciated that a lot more, especially with Lauren and I, I, I like, I, I want to hear how he does it because it's going to change my reaction. Right. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any questions for uh, Tara about Corner Gas or any of the other project, please. I maybe I mean we did blow up a car. That was that was fun. Um, although I was pregnant and I was like, I don't think I should be around this black smoke. <laughs> I was like, I think everyone was like, I think you should leave set. <laughs> Probably not a good idea for you to be around this. They did take all the plastic out, but there was still black smoke. Um, I'm trying. I mean, there was there was a few more. Yeah, like things blowing up. Uh, there was a horse. Uh, but I, it still, to me, while we were filming, it felt like corner gas. The shots are somewhat different because what you're going to shoot for a TV screen and what you're going to shoot for uh, like a movie screen are very different. Like you're not going to do a close up like you would do on television on a movie screen because that would just be freaky. You'd be like, "Whoa, that's a lot!" Like so, you have you you set shots up in a different way. Um, and I would say that, would, that was probably the biggest difference. Um, there was more money for wardrobe, but I was in a cop uniform and pregnant, so I didn't get to wear much. Um, <laughs> uh, they did make me a fancy cop uniform that could expand as my belly grew, though. It was really quite wonderful. <laughs> I remember near the end of filming, I was like, okay, this thing is out as far as it can go, so... <laughs> Oh, we're wrapping this movie up soon because there ain't much more room for this belly. <laughs> How close was it to the due date that the uh, film stopped, uh, stopped filming? So, I'm trying to think. We went until August, and my son was born September 14th. 
So, and he was early. He was six and a half weeks early. So <laughs> that was a bit of a, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm glad I got home. <laughs> that would have sucked. <laughs> Anyone else with uh, <clears throat> any questions? You know, I feel like it, I, it's such a surreal thing for me because I feel like just such a normal person. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it, it, when people tell me that, I'm like, huh, really? That's okay. Wow. Really? Seriously? I get, okay. Wow. I, I, I just feel like I'm like such a normal, boring person in my life that it, it's surreal that I get to have that honor and get to be a part of that. It's very hard for me to wrap my brain around that, that I am part of this iconic series that will I think will be like beachcombers. And um, that's really amazing and that's really special. And I was thinking, you know, the other day I was, the final animation episode is on Monday. And I was like, holy crap. I've been doing this for nearly half of my life. That's insane, and that doesn't really get to happen. And as frustrated as I can get, you know, you, you always want to be doing more in your life, or you want to be, you have ideas of where you would be, and maybe you're not where you thought you would be, or you thought you would be doing this, and it's easy to get caught up in that and forget about the bigger picture of, but look at what we've done and look at what we've accomplished and um, take a moment to appreciate that and, and acknowledge that and don't um, take that away from yourself, which I, I, I feel like I tend to do. Because uh, that's a big thing. Yeah, it's wild. Beachcombers, what's the, what are some more? Oh, what's the dog? Uh, oh, yeah, that was an episode. That was Frank, oh, Fred, Frank. I, we often called Fred Frank because Hank and Fred and they all kind of seem like the same name. I don't know. So we'd be like, Frank, I mean, Fred. Well, with uh, Little <clears throat> Hobo, weren't you in an uh, episode of Hudson and Rat or Hudson and Rex? I was. I know that because it's like my mom's favorite show. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Look at this dog. It's so beautiful. <clears throat> oh my god, working with the dog. I feel so sorry for those people. That's a lot of work. I don't know. I don't between dog. I think I would. I, uh, I think I would pick a child. I don't know. I don't know. I've worked with kids too. It's tough. You can't put a child outside for a few minutes just to. <laughs> <laughs> Do your business, you know. Oh, yeah, but dogs don't eat sugar. <laughs> Some. <laughs> Any more questions? So one other one. Um, the one thing I noticed watching old, like, first season episodes of the show, as opposed to later season episodes and stuff, like, the show is definitely, like, skewed towards an older audience, right? But I, I find that I got, like, a lot more family-friendly as the series went on. And was that like a conscious decision? Was that like sort of like the first season? Not, not that it was raunchy by any means, <laughs> but like <laughs> but the first season did have it moments where it was just like, oh yeah, this is this is adult sitcom. Okay. See, I, I always felt like it was a very family sitcom. What I liked about it is, so, and I'm sure I've said this to people that I've spoken to here, what I love most about this show is that it Anytime someone would tell me about the show, they would talk about, oh, I watched this show with my dad, or um, someone would say, I watched this show with my kids, or we all come together every, you know, every Monday or whatever night it was on to watch as a family. And I think that's, in this day and age, I think it's really hard for a family to sit down and watch a show together. And I know I have two boys, they're seven and ten. And we find shows on Disney that we can sit down and watch together as a family because I think there's something really special that happens when you um, share that and you experience that and then you can talk with each other about that. You have that in common and I think there's just something really beautiful about that and that's the one thing I've always loved about that show, this show because I think that is, that is such a special thing to be able to share and I think it brings a family together and 
what I like about Corner Gas and what I like about these shows that I'm watching with my kids that I now understand is that I think there were jokes for the adults, there were jokes for the teenagers, and there were jokes for the kids. And everybody got to have something, and then everybody got to have something that they didn't understand <laughs> or didn't think was funny. But it was, it was something for everyone. And, it, and, and I, I, I know we talked, I talked about this at the end of the series when we did those videos. It wasn't until I became a mother that I truly understood and appreciated how important that is because I love watching a show with my kid. I love it so much. I think it's just such a special thing and it's really hard to find things that we both love and enjoy. So when you can have that, I just think it's, it's, it's a really special bond. Do they watch the show? So they're starting, I don't know, they just think it's cool that their mom is animated. So um, was really, this, this year for the final season, they had like billboards and posters up and um, there's a bus stop right on the way to where I walk my kids to school and it was like up there all summer. And so my kids were like, really thought it was awesome. Every time we would walk by, and be like, that's my mom. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so they just think it's cool. They're just starting to understand it and their friends are just starting to understand it. I think some kids don't really give a shit. They're like, whatever, I watch YouTube. Everyone's on YouTube, not a big deal. Um, they have watched the movie uh, a couple times. They really like that. I. They'll sometimes turn the TV on and it's on and they'll watch it. But I'm like, I have all the DVD guys, DVDs. You guys can just watch them. And they're like, nah. So they're weird. They're weird. But they, they do think it's, they think it's more cool that I'm animated. Yeah. And they also want any time we get like a corner gas like souvenir from production. So we have like great like prints and, and pictures and stuff like that. I have, they, they want them in their room. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Were you able to take anything from the original set before it was uh, taken down? I took my name placard, the Pelly placard, uh, and I have my badge. Um, actually, the uh, props department put my badge and my, my magnet Pelly in a frame for me. Yeah, which is in my kid's room. <laughs> no, no, uh, no transplanting of the surveillance bush? <laughs> I really wish, like the surveillance bush was such a hit. I'm like, why don't you bring it back all the time? Like at least once a season, you know? Do they not grow <clears throat> in the prairies though? I know, that was such a good gag. It's funny how people just really, that resonated with so many people. People love that one. More questions for anyone? So that's my love. That's that's the kind of acting I like to do, and it's really weird because people. <clears throat> I'm I'm I find as I'm getting older, I'm getting more opportunities with roles like that. That's actually the those are the kind of roles that I love the most, where they're comedic, but they're rough, they're tough, they're edgy. Um, that's where I feel like I get to play the most as an actor, and those are the kind of roles that I go after, and those are the parts that I want to do. That Killjoys was probably one of the most favorite characters I've ever played. I had so much fun with that character, um, and so much fun that they brought me back. Um, yeah, that's that's the kind of that's the kind of role I want. A little little psycho. I play a good psycho. So, if you took Corner Gas completely out of the equation, what would be your most rewarding role that you had? Hmm. Well, interesting. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard because you just take a little bit from everything and everything is so different and unique. And every role you encounter at whatever point you are in your career, in your life, it, it, it represents something different at that time because you're at a different time in your life. And it's, <clears throat> it's hard to explain because you can't really pick one. But I sort of see my career as I sort of watch different things that I've done. It's like a visual photo book where I can sort of remember where I was in my life, at what point I was in my life and what I was dealing with, or it just who I was. And it's, so it's, it's hard because it's, it's like picking a different time in your life. So 
for me now, I'd be like, yeah, I, I guess Killjoys. Like, um, you know, it really, I got to go outside of what I normally get to do and show a different side of myself. But then there's something like New Waterford Girl, where, you know, I, I, I learned so much on that set and I grew so much. So it's, it's, it's really, it's hard to say. Mm. Not the answer you wanted. Hmm. <laughs> no such thing as not the answer I wanted. <laughs> Uh, anyone else with more questions? Questions for Tara? Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing you at one point. I only got the end of it. You were in one of the Wishmaster movies. Yes. And <clears throat> I, I remember catching the end of it. And I always wondered if, like, because you were the final girl in that movie. Like, you, if, if, if you ever, like, kind of thought of yourself at some point being like, oh, I could be the next game and you heard this scream <laughs> I, I kind of feel like the Wishmaster series has just died, <laughs> right? I feel like they were they were really pushing it with, with uh, Wishmaster three and four back to back, and then it was just like. <laughs> I think from uh, like I think people were somewhat underwhelmed with three and four, and I, I I think it branched off, and some people I mean for every. Every horror fan is different and unique, and, and I, I, it is such a, a fandom. But yeah, I don't think, has there been a Wishmaster since then? I feel like it just kind of... I think there was one recently. And yeah? Was, and it was, it was, I think it was a TV movie. I think it was like a shutter or something. Okay. Yeah, it didn't do very much. Yeah, yeah, it's... I, I, think, I think they overdid it with three and four, because literally, they shot them back to back. And uh, I think people were like, meh, that was all right. <laughs> Only a couple of minutes left. Uh, any more questions from anyone? I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's really sweet. So then uh, we're going to be ending up the panel in just a couple moments. I just do have one last question personally for you. Now that we've talked about TV, we've talked about the movie aspect, we've talked about the animation aspect. Now, what is next for you? Do you have a next project to be working on? Um, I just did a horror film called Last the Night with. Um, Actually directed by Daniel, who is in the yeah in the on the in the horror side. So there was a, it was it's kind of like a comedy horror, like a it's a hardcore like cultish type of horror movie um, that I, I I a lot of blood, a lot of blood. Um, it was the butcher shop actually. I think the was the butcher shop here. Yes. Yeah, those wow, those people know what they are doing. Um, so there's that, and uh, hopefully a few more things. We'll see. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming out to Niagara Falls. And oh, also, um, if anyone is going to be doing photo ops later, um, I will be offering half price autographs on those if you want to get your photo op signed. Because I figure you've already paid for a photo op. I don't think you should pay full price for an autograph on top of that damn thing. So if you do the photo op and bring the picture back, I'll sign it for half, half off. All right, everyone. Tara Spencer Aaron. You're like, I could have said that. You can it. Oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. And thank also, you, thank you just for, we have awesome fans, and I just want to say thank you. Thanks, man. Oh, oh no oh, yeah, problem. That's that, um, the last thing that that guy made is. Dan, what happens every Thursday? That would be DCR Droids Canada Radio. And what time is it out on Thursday? That's from 9 till 11 p.m. Dumb question. Where do you find it? You find that at accessradio.ca. And what's the best part? It's free.